So guys, today back for another video on the channel today. We're here for the new Castle United vs Brighton preview, the first away day of the Premier League season for Newcastle United. We're playing Brighton on Saturday, 3 o'clock kickoff at the Amex Stadium. It's going to be a really interesting game. Both teams won their opening game and it is a really exciting game going into Saturday. Make sure to leave a like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It would mean a lot if you could do this. It was the first video with the camera, obviously, and, and the setup and whatnot, with the new top on, the preview, and obviously the predict the team on tomorrow. We've got the game on Saturday. Let's get into it now, boys. Let's look at Brighton for this game on Saturday. So then, Brighton, obviously, the main talking point we've got to start off with was the first match week of the Premier League season. That 2 1 win against Manchester United. It doesn't matter if Manchester United are going through a rebuild, going through a new stage of the of their club going through a new transition right going to Old Trafford and being 2-0 up and looking very very comfortable throughout the full game and should have a penalty at 2-0 fair play and even when I look at their start 11 right how is Graham Potter getting the best out of these players players like Danny Welbeck is starting Premier League games and consistently playing good Adam Lalana fell off massively from his glory days at Liverpool and Southampton still performing well obviously Gross uh, Pactel's Gross got um, two goals um, weren't the best goals but yet again scoring two goals at um, Old Trafford you're never going to say no to that they had a very attacking lineup, in my opinion. Obviously, they had um, McAllister in the midfield with Trossard and March, the wing backs. They were look, they look quite attacking, but Trossard defended well. Obviously, they did bring on some substitutes. Obviously, now you're allowed to make five substitutes. They brought on some defensive players towards the end. Um, one player that stuck to mind for me was Undav. They signed him. Looks ridiculous. He he got the most goals in a league to game ratio something daft like that I know it was only the Belgium league I think but he, look, he looks like he'd be a really good player but they did do really really well Brighton their goalkeeper as well Sanchez really good goalkeeper like even the, the Man United team yes you look at some of them players and they should not be anywhere near that sort of 11 but it's still absolutely class I know Man United didn't even have a strike on the pitch but it, it's fair play it's absolutely fair play to um, to Graham Potter obviously he got linked with a Newcastle job um, would I have took him now no because Eddie Howe has done absolutely ridiculous at Newcastle but you kind of sit here and say um, Brighton are going to be an easy game or whatever I still don't think no we've beaten Brighton once in our Premier League history once and that was the last time we played them 2-1 at St James's Park every other time we've got beat or we've drew nil nil that's like like what you know what I mean one 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 draw on there we've got to go to the Amex if we can pick up two wins right considering our next three games are really really tough after Brighton Man City at home Wolves away and Liverpool away um, two away matches one at home against City then that Wolves game could be completely different than what it is now with the transfer window. Obviously, they're letting players go for big money and whatnot. So, when you look at this Brighton game, it's cr crucial for us to pick up them three points. But, Brighton will be saying the same thing. When we look at Brighton's fixtures um, in the coming weeks, they've got some interesting games um, up and coming. So, they have got... They've got Newcastle, West Ham, Leeds, Fulham. You look at that. And... Yeah, they've got some real realistic games, but they've got a tough run towards the later one in the season where they've got Liverpool, Tottenham, Brentford, um, not in the Fathers, Man City, Chelsea, all in them weeks. They've got to be picking up points where they can. Games like Leeds at home, Fulham away, um, Bournemouth away in the coming weeks. That's where Brighton need to be picking up their points. But it's a funny one with Brighton because it seems like they'll never really do like Brighton over the, years, over the years have not been in that relegation battle whatsoever since the 18-19 season where we generally thought they could have got relegated they've not been in that fight they've always been just, just 12th to 14th around that area they'll win one week, lose one week and it's just they just do so well and the good thing about Brighton they've got so much rotation and that's what I like about them they've got a load of bunch of centre backs they've got a decent amount of midfielders they've got some good wing backs obviously I know losing Cucurella but you look at Brighton as well for the business side selling Ben White and Cucurella for 110 million combined 
you take that in a heartbeat for how good they were for your football clubs, you do not say no to 60 million for Kukovea. Like, you don't. The market is gone. Don't get us wrong, he's a fantastic player. Don't know why he went to Chelsea, but. Right, if I'm right, if I'm laughing. You can sign so many good players. You can sign two amazing players for 30 million, three really, really good squad players, start 11 players, for 20 million pounds each. That for me, they've got themselves an absolute, an absolute steal getting Kuka away, away for 60 odd million, only being at the at, at the, um, the Amex for for one season. But they, 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 they can do well. And obviously, they've still got time to pick up some more transfers. To, where do they need to improve at this rate? And anywhere they're doing absolutely amazing. Obviously, beating Manchester United for starters and that doesn't seem too tough in recent weeks, but still a tough game against United and Brighton have done extremely well to pick up three points and to pick up their first win of the Premier League season. They will want to be coming to the Amex first time in a long time for them. Want to pick up three points. So then Newcastle now. I wanted to say this so much about speaking about Brighton, but we've still seen the news about the kit, right? All of our kits clash with Brighton. So, what the Premier League done? Let me do. Design a new kit. It's got big, it's got bridges on. If that kit's not to say sign for us, I don't know what does. It's got bridges. It's got it's it, it's it's You see it on screen. It's absolutely stunning. I'm so happy to see that. Um, am I gonna buy it? You'll have to wait and see. You might see it one day. I'll just pop it on in the video, and there we are. We're laughing, but um, going into the game, obviously. We'll speak a little bit briefly about Saturday against Nottingham Forest. A really good three points. You want to check out that vlog? It's a really, really good one. Electric atmosphere in that game. Really, really good. Really, really good game. Dominated and overall, you couldn't ask for much more. The only thing you could ask for was a couple of more goals, and we probably should have scored a couple of more goals, but that's nah, not that much of a problem. Um, in a game like that, where you knew that we were just going to score, and you did sort of do that little bit of magic, and you were in the, probably the least person you probably expect to do something was Fabi Shaw, I mean, that's probably Dan Byrne, da if I seen Dan Byrne score from there I'd run on the pitch fucking naked, w what a goal that was by Fabi Shaw, Un unbelievable, you just need that little bit of brilliance and whatnot to come out of a player and it's absolutely delighted because he got bruised, he he wasn't even starting games for Newcastle, Kieran Clark was chosen over Fabian Shaw for most time under Steve Bruce, Eddie Howe gets the best out of him and proves everyone fucking wrong. What a player, what a goal that was. And obviously it's brilliant to see Callum Wilton score yet again on the opening day. He scored on every single opening day for Newcastle since he signed. I think everyone had a good game on Saturday, like from, from bottom to top. Pope, Target, Burn, Shaw, Trippier, Bruno, Joe Linton, Willock, Maxi, Miggy and Wilton. Miggy just needs to find out where his right foot's gone because he can't he, he he can't rely on that left foot. Miggy should have at least got two goals and it would have would have proved everyone wrong. He had such a good preseason. If he, if he scored on that opening week, he would have proved everyone wrong. Are we going to see the best out of him this season? We'll have to wait and see. Uh, it will be a really interesting game. I expect us to, You know what? Against the Fathers as well. I don't know what Eddie Howe's done. Obviously, he's had a pre-season with Newcastle. I generally think the football was just so good. I don't know if that was because we were playing against the Nottingham Fathers. Obviously, obviously newly... Uh, promoters, but the football looks so fluent and, and one touch passes and Joe Linton and Bruno just passing it. It was just like playing triangles and then Willock would just play a ball across the trip. Yeah, and we've got so much space on that side to create a chance, get an early ball into the box. That's the only thing that we're lacking is a bit of height when the ball goes into the box. F that isn't a corner. Um, that's the only thing. I felt like we were putting a lot of balls in the box in that first half against Nottingham Forest, and I can't see Callum Wilson getting his head onto it against a six foot four um, centre back for Nottingham Forest, um, Neil Carty. Um, but it's, it's one of them. It's one of them to improve on, one of them to think about it. And then we started playing a little bit more football, and then that's where we started to get our chance where Julian had that little runner and he just put it wide when Miggy was doing because there were so many balls going to the box to Miggy and I was just like he cannot do anything when the ball goes in the box to him but if we utilise to our strengths going in against Brighton where we can play our fluid football with the midfield that we've got at the minute I don't see why we can't not lose the game I don't know why we can't go to that game going oh we should we should win or we should definitely pick up a point I think if you, if you, if we draw against Brighton, 
great start. Four points, you can't complain. Are we going to win though? It will be a really interesting one. I'll give you my prediction now. We're on the high at the minute. I can't see we're signing anyone before the game. I'm going to go... Oh, I, you know what? I'll go for the same prediction as I did for Nottingham Forest. A little bit on the fence. I'll go 2 1 Newcastle. We could concede early. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, again, now we didn't lose the Brighton last season. We drew 1 1 and beat them 2 1. Yeah, 2 1 Newcastle. That's what I am going for. And that's the end of the preview. Make sure to leave a like, boy, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It wouldn't be a lot if you could do so. Loads of support on the Nottingham Forest vlog. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all for the Predict the Team tomorrow and the game on Saturday. Have a good one, boys. See you later. And up the mags.